And this week's video will be an example of that. This will be the first installment in a series of videos exploring the countless, incredibly obscure, yet fascinating archaeological sites speckled across Egypt. Today, we'll be covering an amazing site that I bet you've never heard of before, even if you're as obsessed with ancient Egypt as me. This almost totally unexcavated site may still hold the key to unlocking the secrets of one of Egypt's most ephemeral royal dynasties, is connected to the story of one of the ancient world's most bizarre families, and has produced masterpieces of both ancient Egyptian and even classical art. If you happen to visit the small rural town of Saka in the center of Egypt's Nile Delta, you probably wouldn't think much of it. But underneath Saka are the remains of a millennia-old city. Its original Egyptian name was Hasu, Hasut, and Haset, but it's more commonly referred to by its Greek name, Zoas. So that's what I'll be calling it throughout this video. The earliest reference to Zoas I was able to find predates the construction of the Great Pyramid. It can be found in the beautifully decorated funerary chapel of the Mastaba, or bench, tomb of the high official Mechin, discovered in 1842 by Prussian Egyptologist Carl Richard Lepsius in Saqqara, specifically a bit north of the famed Steppe Pyramid. But you won't find it in Saqqara nowadays. That's because it was dismantled, given to the Prussians in 1845 by Muhammad Ali Pasha, and put on display in Berlin's Egyptian Museum. The chapel is generally dated to the reign of Sneferu, the, who founded the 4th dynasty and the father of the builder of the Great Pyramid, Khufu. Its owner, Mechin, was a pretty important dude. He was a confidant of the king, a member of the Privy Council, and the administrator of the particular province of Egypt, whose capital was Zoas. You see, Egypt was divided into 42 different provinces called Nomes, 20 of which were in Lower Egypt, which basically just consists of the Nile Delta. Zoas was the capital of the sixth Lower Egyptian Nome, confusingly called Hasuu, which can also be transliterated as Hasuu. It means mountain bull. Look, I swear the ancient Egyptians weren't furries, okay? Let's just continue. Uh, so, Mechin owned a lot of land, and a text consisting of 11 columns of hieroglyphs carefully sculpted onto the wall of his chapel lists the 12 land endowments he had in various lower Egyptian gnomes, including the Zoite gnome, the gnome of Zoas. The food that came from these estates supplied his funerary cult with offerings and were used to pay the priests running it, and this beautiful depiction of the Zoite gnome symbol comes from that very text. As far as I know, no tangible material evidence, i.e. artifacts, from Zoas from this period, or any period for that matter, prior to the late period, have been found in Zoas yet, so we don't really know what was going on there from this point until the beginning of the Second Intermediate Period, when it may become the seat of the little understood 14th Dynasty. The Second Intermediate Period was a time when Egypt was disunited politi politically and culturally, and it followed the end of the Glorious Middle Kingdom. At the moment, there isn't much known about the 14th Dynasty. In fact, its very chronological position is heavily debated. It may have emerged as early as around 1805 BC, during or shortly after the reign of the powerful 12th Dynasty's last pharaoh, Sobek Neferu, a rare female pharaoh, or as late as 1725 BC, during the middle of the much less powerful 13th Dynasty, but it probably ended either way around 1650 BC due to a prolonged famine that began around 1700 BC, which allowed a foreign group, the Hyksos, to conquer them. Now, these are all approximate dates. Uh, all the dates this far back are very muddled, so don't remember them. Something that's a bit more certain about the 14th dynasty is that its members weren't actually native Egyptians. Based on their names, which are of Northwest Semitic origin, they were Canaanites living in the Eastern Delta that seceded from the Central Egyptian government. 
According to Manetho, an Egyptian priest and Delta native who authored a history of Egypt in Greek named the Egyptiaca, for the first pharaohs of the much, much later Greek Ptolemaic dynasty, the 14th dynasty was based in Zoas and produced a whopping 76 pharaohs. However, the Turin Canon, an incredibly important king list made during the reign of the famed 19th dynasty pharaoh Ramses II, mentions only around 56 14th dynasty pharaohs. Still a lot, but, you know, not the same. Although the Turin Canon was made centuries after the 14th dynasty's fall, Manetho's Egyptiaca was made literally a millennia afterwards, um, which are both reasons to doubt its accuracy. In fact, to be frank, most Egyptologists believe that the 14th dynasty was actually based in a place called Avaris, the modern site of Tel el Daba. It's been hypothesized that Manetho's sources confused the Egyptian word Hasut, which means foreign land, with Zoas's original Egyptian name, Hasu, as I said before, at some point. However, if the 14th dynasty's capital actually was Zoas, which it very well could be, its excavation could result in, this, in the discovery of material that could completely revolutionize our understanding of the 14th dynasty and the second intermediate period as a whole. It's possible that a royal archive might even be discovered. And although it wouldn't rival the famous Amarna letters, the royal archive of the court of Amenhotep III and Akhenaten, any archive found in the Delta probably wouldn't be that substantial given that the Delta is moist and it's not conducive to the survival of organic material. But anyways, surviving scraps could still prove to be extremely informative. The Hyksos, who I mentioned before, uh, another foreign group, had their own dynasty, the 15th which was also based in Avaris, and it was vanquished by the founder of the New Kingdom, a native Egyptian from Thebes named Ahmosa I, who reunified Egypt and founded the prosperous New Kingdom. In this period, the cult of Amun-Re, which originated in Thebes, likely came to Zoas along with other places in the Delta. Along with Amun came his divine consort, Mut, and their offspring, the moon god, Honsu. Together, they formed what's called the Zoite Triad. The only material evidence I could find from Zoas, or its vicinity in this case, from the New Kingdom, are two inscribed colossal red granite statues depicting Pharaoh Merneptah, the 13th son of Ramses II, he got around, with uh, the god Ray, found in the village of Kafir Matbul, right immediately to the east of modern Saka. I, I I can't tell you how much time I spent trying to t track down pictures of these colossi. I mean, there must be some pictures of these massive statues somewhere. It's in the name. They're colossi. But somehow, I just wasn't able to find them. Uh, additionally, there is one reference to Zoas in one of the most famous New Kingdom sites in all of Egypt, the Valley of the Kings on the west bank of Thebes. On the left wall of the second corridor of the tomb of the third last pharaoh of the New Kingdom, Ramses IX, there were 11 in total, there's a rather beautiful scene depicting Ramses IX receiving the quote-unquote royalty of Ray in Zoas. Not from Ray, but from Horus. Um, this might connect to Zoas being called the Mansion of Kingship, or more specifically, the Mansion of Kingship of Ray. I don't... I don't know exactly what that means, but it's a testament to Zoas' uh, ideological significance at the time. I wasn't able to find any objects from or mentioning Zoas dating to the Third Intermediate Period, which was the period that immediately followed the New Kingdom, but there are a handful from the Late Period. <laughs> 